Hey folks, it's Dr. Gersmar at Aspire Natural Health picking up with uh, part two of the vlog on insomnia. So this all came about with a patient who was having issues with insomnia, something unfortunately pretty common these days. Um, and the knee jerk reaction for a lot of people is saying, hey, I can't sleep. Do you have a sleeping pill for me. Now, whether that's prescription sleeping pills or whether that's supplement uh, sleeping pills in the forms of, uh, form of things like melatonin or other herbal medicines, uh, the first approach is uh, to go for a sleeping pill. Not necessarily the best choice. So, Quickly here, guys, um, melatonin does seem to decline with age, seems to be one of the factors um, in poorer sleep as people get older. So certainly supplemental melatonin can make sense for people. It is incredibly safe, um, has some other awesome things like anti-cancer benefits. So if you were going to choose a sleeping pill, uh, something like melatonin can be a great choice. Also some of the other herbal medicines, especially the gentle ones, uh, uh, so having something like a cup of chamomile tea or catnip um, are very, very gentle, mildly relaxing herbal medicines, which can be very helpful. But we need to step back again. Now, in part one of this series, we talked, we started to answer the question about why can't you sleep? One of the answers is because you are overstimulating yourself. And we talked about if we really want to answer that question and not just hit you with a sleeping pill, whether that's natural or prescription to put you to sleep, we need to get to the root cause of why you're having trouble sleeping. So we talked about reducing stimulation. Now we're going to go into some other factors. So one of the common issues for people who can't sleep is that they can't turn off their mind. They have too much going on, thoughts swirling and swirling and swirling. They lay down and they just can't shut off their brain and get to sleep. So again, this is a form of overstimulation. Now, let's talk about some ways to get after that. So it's very simple and often we have people just kind of brush this aside, but a very powerful therapy when we have a brain that won't turn off is the use of to-do lists and journaling. So simply put, a lot of people have their brain won't turn off because they're thinking about everything that they either have to do uh, is on their plate, they need to do tomorrow, or, or just worrying about issues. And fundamentally, the problem is, you know, their brain, whether consciously, like they're thinking about this, or non-consciously, they're not even considering it, is worried that if it shuts down and turns off, all these balls that you're juggling, all these to-dos and things, you're just going to drop them all, and everything will fall apart. And so you can't relax, you can't let this go, or or else everything's going to come crashing down around you. And simply put, the most effective therapy I've seen here is just simply a to-do list, is just simply writing down those things. I mean, if you find yourself worrying, oh man, I got to go to the store tomorrow. Oh man, I got to do this. I got to do that. At work, I need to do this. All these things. It's simply put, write that stuff down. It can be as simple as that, but your brain, right, your mind, knowing that you've written it down, you won't forget it now, can relax and let it go. So whether that's, you know, before bedtime, just sitting down with a piece of paper or your computer, tablet, phone, whatever it is, and making a list of all that stuff. Drain your brain, get out all of those to-dos, whether they're silly or serious, whether you honestly really need to do them or you just like to do them, get it all down right? That lets your brain download it all, rest and relax. You don't have to worry about it. It's written down. Look, if you need that list, when you get up in the morning, take it and actually use it. If you don't, throw it in the trash. Doesn't matter, but it's a form of brain dump. Now, journaling is the other side of it. So we've talked about, you know, having all of these issues on our mind, all of these things that we need to do. Journaling is another way of getting out you know, the stresses and strains of the day. So simply put, whether that's sitting down with a piece of paper, we often recommend people get those old cheap, you know, spiral bound notebooks or you know what, look, recycle some scratch paper. You're not creating a work of art here, people. You're just
just trying to get information down. So again, whether it's sitting down with a pen and a piece of paper, whether it's you know sitting down in front of a keyboard, a tablet, a phone, or whatever it is, we often are recommending somewhere between you know five and ten minutes, up to thirty minutes or an hour if you, that's what you really need. Just sit down and get that stuff out of your head. Whether you're writing about the jerk in traffic today, issues with your coworkers, your spouse, your friends, like just junk in your mind, right? It's a chance to just download that. We live in a society, a time, and a place where we input more stuff into our brains than our ancestors, especially our distant ancestors, ever had to deal with. And look, it's awesome how much information we have at our fingertips, but it also is just so much bombarding our brains um, that our brain can have trouble dealing with that onslaught. And simply downloading it onto a page, whether it's a computer page or an actual piece of paper, can help your brain unwind. Um, it also can help you know, provide some clarity on issues. Like if you're still mad because of something that happened during the day, writing about the experience and about how you're feeling can often provide some breakthroughs where you realize, oh, this or what's going on or get some insight. What should I do about this situation? Often the very act of writing about it, thinking about it can provide some really good insights for people. So listen, it sounds really simple and it is really simple but it doesn't mean that it's any less profound and it's often much more effective than just taking a sleeping pill, right? And bludgeoning yourself into unconsciousness is getting, downloading a lot of that, those thoughts out of your head. Also, meditation can be incredibly calming and useful and we find meditation is kind of back and forth. Some people love it, want to do it. We highly recommend it. There are many ways to do it. Um, it's simply landing on and finding the one that works best for you. For other people, uh, meditation just doesn't work well and these things like journaling are much more effective. Now a second piece is this. Humans, broadly speaking, have two different modes that we operate in. We have what's called the sympathetic mode called fight or flight and that's just up active getting stuff done mode, right? We have our parasympathetic mode also called rest and digest and that's just is what it is. It's rest, relaxation, restoration, digesting and absorbing food. So a lot of us from the moment the alarm goes off, we jump out of bed, taking stimulants in the form of coffee, running around like mad all day, using our brain, lots of to-dos, lots of things to happen, lots of stress, right? Are, are in that sympathetic fight or flight mode all day until we basically put our butt down in bed and then we're trying to get to sleep. So some of us can easily switch that off and get into that parasympathetic mode to calm down, rest and relax. A lot of us have some trouble though. So there can be simple things, obviously things like taking a nice warm bath, resting and relaxing, reading a good uh, book, helps us calm our brain and get into a better place. But we often recommend uh, just some deep breathing. Now you can get into specific techniques here. I find that often that's just not important. But the form of breathing that is sympathetic or fight or flight is rapid and shallow. And that's, most of us don't even realize that we're doing that. The form of parasympathetic, which is deep and slow, you know, look, you don't have to be a rocket scientist here, but we often recommend, okay, go ahead and lay down, get in bed, lay down, and then just start taking a series. Just breathe in slowly, pause, breathe out slowly. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that. We often like to pair that with just a form of progressive relaxation, which is either start at the top of your head or the bottom of your feet, just work your way down through your body as you're taking deep breaths. When you find areas that are tense or tight, just go ahead and focus on relaxing those, those areas. And often after a few minutes, you find your body is relaxed and the breathing has shifted you into that parasympathetic mode. Now, especially if you've downloaded any thoughts in your brain that are keeping you up, it can be a profoundly relaxing effort. So a few minutes creating your to-do list, writing out anything that's bothering you, laying down, taking some deep breaths, doing some progressive relaxation can be incredibly helpful for people who can't shut off their brain, can't relax, can't get to sleep. 
All right, so we talked about journaling. We talked about how, ex again, exercise before, so too close to bed can be an issue. But for some people, their, their body isn't tired and getting some exercise can be incredibly helpful. Breathing and progressive relaxation. We touched on light and blue light. We talked about meditation. Now, the other thing that can be very helpful for people are the different apps. So we talked about how having your phone and that blue light can be an issue, but there are plenty of different apps on the on your phone that can put you through meditation uh, you know a couple that are popular I have no affiliation with either of them so check them out if it works for you are uh, the meditation studio by Gaia that's G A I a M again no affiliation also a lot of people are using the head space app and finding a lot of benefit from that so that's two places to start with also there's some so a meditation app can take you through that whole process of relaxing and winding down a lot of people like it uh, there are what's called binaural beats so this is music that you you have to listen to it with a headphone or little headphones that go in your ears uh, but it, it, to simplify Putting uh, different sounds into each ear can uh, push your brain into those more relaxed brain states. So um, you can check out binaural beats. Some people find those incredibly helpful. Uh, lastly, a super basic thing uh, that I should have touched on first is just, is your bedroom a good place to go to bed? right? Is your bed comfortable? You'll be surprised at the number of people who say no. If your bed's not comfortable, your body doesn't really want to lay down on it for, you know, seven plus hours at night. Again, if your bedroom's not dark, your brain, your body are, are tailored to when it is light, it's time to be up. When it's dark, it's time to go to bed. So if your bedroom is not dark, if you have a lot of light shining into your bedroom, we recommend getting some blackout curtains, uh, closing the door, getting that place dark. Um, if your bedroom is not a little cool, so again, when it's too, if like, like most of us, you probably had the experience of trying to sleep when it's really hot and you just have a terrible night's sleep. So, uh, you know, making sure that your bedroom is a little cooler at night can be incredibly helpful. Um, and then just quiet right? So if your partner snores, you have a lot of road noise or other noise coming into your room, uh, using things like white noise or, uh, you know, escalating all the way to putting in earplugs or uh, unfortunately sometimes we've had to ask people to sleep separately from their partner. So to spend time with them, have intimate time with them, but uh, fundamentally when it comes down uh, to sleeping at night, sometimes we have to have people sleep in separate rooms. All right, so we've covered a lot. There are still a lot more things that can be done. There are a lot of supplements where you can really go down the rabbit hole. But these are all lifestyle-based things that people can do to sleep better at night without having to take sleeping pills. All right, if you're having trouble sleeping, having other health issues, please feel welcome to contact us. You can find us at www.aspirenaturalhealth.com, on Facebook at facebook.com slash aspirenaturalhealth. And of course, you can find us on YouTube. Just search Aspire Natural Health. You'll find our channel and all our videos there. We focus on helping people with gut problems, autoimmune diseases, and other hard-to-treat cases. Look, not sleeping is not only a pain in the butt, it makes you tired the next day. Not getting enough sleep contributes to basically all other health conditions. If you don't sleep well, you won't heal well, and whatever else is going on for you will be a lot worse. We challenge a lot of our patients to really focus on sleep and do a 30-day sleep trial, which is really trying to get more sleep and better quality sleep at night. We often see that their well-being, their energy levels, their mood, and yes, even even a whole host of health conditions improve with better quality sleep. So no matter what is going on for you, we recommend that you take some time and effort, focus it on getting good quality sleep at night. Having said that, if we can help you guys out, please feel welcome to contact us. Please check us out. We are always, always trying to educate ourselves so that we can do better by our patients. Until we talk again next time, folks, take care.